in, in FIFA, either as first man or first and second man, since last 36 years. So I think it's worked quite long, you know, and any new, new blood, fresh air, new ideas, is going to be to the, to the benefit of the game. Mm. Mr. Ben Hamam, uh, you have said that you want to usher in a new era in FIFA, one of good governance and transparency. Why would you say something like that? Is it that Mr. Blatter has not been running a very tight ship all these years? Well, you know, you can, you can find the answer from the numbers of times FIFA has been attacked by media all over the world. Some of them is actually, some of this accusation maybe have some ground and some of them doesn't have a ground. I always pretended that FIFA is not a corrupted organization, but because we are surrounding ourselves with so much you know, secrety and, you know, uh, we are isolating ourselves from the public. I think that's, that, that's, that is the bad image which we are giving about our organization. You know, forgetting that our game, the football, is the, the game of the people. And I believe that, you know, that is also our act has to be controlled and, you know, monitored by the people. We have to satisfy the people who love the football more than to satisfy certain regulation and FIFA. Do, do you think that uh, with the number of allegations over the years that have come up against FIFA in terms of corruption, in terms of the way they do business, that Mr. Blatter and by extension FIFA has dealt with these issues of accountability and transparency as effectively as they should have? I, th I, I think they tried to do so, but uh, I believe they, they never satisfied the opinion of the, of the public. You know, mainly, again, you know, Mr. Blatter, he is the one maybe most you know, attacked by this uh, allegation. So, I mean, in, in the same time, you cannot be, you know, the victim and the judge, you know. So, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons where people think the change in FIFA uh, is, is, a, is the right move. Mr. Ben Hamam, uh, looking back over the success that FIFA has enjoyed, uh, one can, you know, you can't argue that the organization has prospered. It's flowered under the hands of Mr. Blatter and that you and the other 24 members on the Executive Council have really benefited from that. You've prospered with that. How can you come and say now that much of what we've seen in terms of FIFA's growth and development may not have come at, um, it may have come at a heavy price in terms of uh, maybe we, weren't, we didn't always subscribe to the highest in integrity values and so on and so forth. Maybe some of the deals we were involved in weren't as transparent as they were to be. How can you come in and, and make statements along that line now when you were there, you were part of the process, and the organization grew because all the members agreed this was the way that we need to go in order to make the organization strong? Okay. Actually, uh, not only FIFA is successful with the development of the game or, you know, popularizing the game. You have, uh, you know, other examples like the Premier League, you have uh, UEFA uh, Champion uh, Leagues, UEFA Cup. There are so many other competitions, actually, which is, uh, which is uh, very popular, very profitable, generate more funds than FIFA uh, uh, is doing. But the organization by, the, by themselves are more attached and connected to the people. Okay, now, having said that, actually, yes, we, the 24 members of FIFA, we're supposed to be jointly responsible for what FIFA, uh, you know, uh, gain, whether it is, you know, positive or, or, or negative. But sometimes, you know, our, our meetings is only each, each three, three months, and this is not, 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 not an excuse, actually, or good excuse. excuse. But most of the time, you know, we are receiving information about things happened and maybe happened the way which satisfies us, satisfies us as 24 members and satisfy our rules and regulations. But it's not necessary, again, to satisfy the, uh, the public. I have another point here, you know, our game is about competition. Okay. And if the competition is also as vibrant in this post as a FIFA presidency, I think we are adding more values to our organization. I don't see my contest for Blatter, for Mr. Blatter, even if he is the angel in the earth and running FIFA, I don't see it actually uh, a problem.
for the game or for the organization. I see it actually adding values and adding advantages uh, to, uh, to FIFA. Okay. Football is a multi-billion dollar industry. It's spoke about FIFA, the UEFA Cup, the Champions League, the South American League, the Bundesliga, uh, really generating millions of dollars, really creating superstars around the world. And FIFA has been at the vanguard of, through the World Cup, of really galvanizing football as the most popular sport in the world. You spoke about transparency and accountability in terms of the challenges facing FIFA and some, some level of insularity and, and separation from the public. What do you think are some of the other challenges facing FIFA in the next five to ten years? Well, I, I think, you know, the bad acts of, uh, uh, of the pitch and on the pitch now, for example, we, are, we, we could face the match fixing or bribing of, uh, briberies of, the, of, of the referees in the future if you are not, uh, if you are not uh, cautious. Uh, you know, something like this, uh, these things can be happened in the game, for the game. You brought up the issue of refereeing, and there's this big question mark now, AC Milan, Barcelona, every, everyone's questioning the level of refereeing and, and, and the possible biases of refereeing. But what would you do as president of FIFA to ensure there's a higher standard and more accountability in terms of the refereeing aspect of the game, not only in the, in the World Cup, but, but in many other areas of football around the world? Well, you know, we have, we have, we have an experience in, in Asia by, by ourselves, you know, when we weren't taking good care about the education of, uh, of the referees, there was a lot of mistakes happened by referees and most of the people, the public uh, in general, they, you know, sometimes uh, think it is, you know, match fixing or something like that. But when our referees started to go through more and more educations, and more and more training, our uh, mistakes has been minimized. But today's problem, our referees of today's problem is what is the technology. Each match, especially those matches we are talking about, will be monitored and uh, telecast by about 50 cameras. You know, each camera is covering, cover, covering maybe each one Second centimeter in the, in the pitch, with, where referee ha has only two eyes. And the people not judging upon what they see by their eyes in the field, but what they are saying with, with different So you think that the technology should be used more and more? You said, you say, you know, it stops the game too much. And naturally, I believe the technology will be, will be introduced. And for today, I can see there is one area we should introduce the, the, the uh, technology, is the, the land, uh, goal line technology. Because also there are so many, so many goals. I, I, I will not say so many, to be not exaggerating. Uh, there, are, there are some goals. Passing the passing the, the line and the referees cannot see it, so I think the goal line te technology will help. Now there are another thing. That now we are trying in FIFA uh, to to introduce to the game in terms of refereeing to add another two referees behind the goals, and I believe also that's going to reduce the, you know the, the or to minimize the mistakes of the referees. Nevertheless, the mistakes you know decision by referees will never end. And if it, if it is end, then they are not a human. Mr. Bim Hamam, in terms of this uh, overall anti-match fixing plan that FIFA has come up with recently, uh, apart from the referees, you're also supposed to be engaged in uh, educating the players and other officials and administrators as well in football. Um, <clears throat> in terms of your area of responsibility, which is the Asian um, Confederation, uh, there was an ugly issue with regard to illegal betting and match fixing as well. How have you been able to deal with that particular issue uh, even before this new plan that was announced by the overall governing body FIFA? The Confederation by itself cannot do anything and the National Association by itself cannot do anything because we are not police, you know. We don't have jails, we cannot, we don't have, you know, punishment. We can, if you suspected the referee, we can just take him out of the list. If suspected the player, mm -hmm. we can just ban him from playing. That's all what we do. And, <clears throat> and this is not all the, all the problem. The problem there are people outside the field who are not connected to us, who are not in our uh, registration uh, uh, books or files. They are doing the bad, the bad acts. If the governments, governments of any country, are not actively involved in fighting the corruption in the football, I think the, the FIFA or member association or the confederation Will be, will be helpless to, to do so. All the challenges which we face in Asia, actually the government has the major role, and I will say the only role, 
to fight and to correct the situation. So the, the government interference here is very much appreciated. Mm. But, and, but the overall plan itself, are you happy with the plan that has been proposed? Or should you become FIFA president, would you want to make uh, additional changes to it to make it even stronger and tougher? On illegal activity in football well I, th I think you know we need more debate and this is actually one thing we are missing or one of the th things which are missing in FIFA actually the debate never takes place now you told me uh, that I will be responsible as uh, as a member of the executive committee about any decisions you know that has been uh, taken by FIFA actually I'm not part of this uh, debate I'm not part of this uh, recommendations uh, so it has been discussed by the administration, and it's going to be coming to us on a paper that we have, we, have, we, have, we you know, this is what happened, and we have to agree or disagree. That's all what we, what we can do. So my way of, of, of dealing with all the things, that more debates is going to be taking place, more professional people, uh, specific, uh, you know, uh, specialist people are going to debate on the different issues, and they have to come out uh, with, the, with the decision. So in my manifesto, actually, I am opening the door for more say in FIFA than it is. You seem to be speaking to, to an issue where FIFA is seeming, would, you, would it be accurate to say FIFA is not being run as democratically and as yes, I, I, or, or exactly. Seb Blatter is running more like a dictator and doing what he wants with his crew and you want more diplomacy and democracy in the running of the FIFA affairs? I, I, I want actually more say for the clubs, more say for member association, more say for the leagues, more say for the players, more say for the coaches. These are the elements of the uh, of the game, and they are these are the people who are making uh, making the game. So they have to have more say in FIFA. Is that is practical in terms of the size of FIFA yes. and the number of clubs and players that it governs? Of course, you know we are not talking about uh, uh, each and every club, uh, club in, in the planet, but you know clubs can have representative, like what we are doing now in in, in our case. The the member association in, in FIFA is 208 member associations while the members, uh, the executive committee of FIFA is only 24 uh, members and most of us are, is not anymore connected with, with, with its member associations and yet we are representing member associations. So actually, actually what I'm talking, a representative of these people or those groups can be, you know, can be uh, within the uh, discussion deb or debate uh, system. Mr. Bimhama, let me see if I understand what you're saying correctly. You are representing a confederation in the Asian region. And you can say comfortably that you really are representing the thoughts and hopes and wishes of all of the groups that make up that confederation. Yeah, yeah. But when you get to the big meeting, the executive meeting, is it that all you're relegated to is simply rubber stamping a decision? Well, I am representing Asia and I have to defend the interests of Asia. But my moral responsibility, me and the others, we are representing the football worldwide, and you have to protect the integrity of football worldwide. It is that in that in that particular case, we are not talking about our own uh, confederations or our own nations. We are talking uh, globally. Yes, FIFA system today is more providing information information than uh, providing uh, platform. Uh, pra so, so you think the way that FIFA is being run now? It is more in the interest of the administration than the actual players and, and clubs, and, and there needs to be more involvement from a foreground level, is what you're saying. Exactly. I'll, tell you, I'll give you one example. How do you think, in your opinion, 20 million euro? Is it a small amount or a big amount? Well, it depends on the context. 